What's ahead in the new year for the Fieldhouse Museum? We'll have that story next on City Corner. Today we're going to take a look at what's in store for the Fieldhouse Museum in St. Louis in this brand new year of 2018. Stephanie Bliss is their assistant director. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Glad you to know, be here. Everyone here is, I guess everyone has heard the name Eugene Field. Um, in fact, I had some siblings that went to a Eugene Field a grade school in Springfield, Missouri of all places. So for those that don't know anything about Eugene Field, what should we know about that person? Well, um, Eugene Field was a famous poet. He was born here in St. Louis in 1850, and um, he is best known today as being um, the children's poet uh, for some of his poems, such as Wink and Blink and a Nod and The Gingham Dog and Calico Cat. Uh, but what he was best known for when he was actually alive was his journalism. He was one of the first syndicated newspaper columnists and he's considered the father of the personal column. See, I didn't even realize that. Oh yeah. Did, did, did he write about specific topics? Or? Well that was the great thing about Eugene was that he was so advanced for his time that he um, was the first person to write about anything and everything. So he had no limitations on his famous column. Mm. So he wrote about baseball, he wrote about politicians, he wrote about events at the time, just anything that was going on that, that com came across his mind. Mm -hmm. And poetry was actually part of that. So that's how he became known as a poet. Mm -hmm. um, was, so he was very famous in his day. Oh, very famous. Actually, um, he, in 1895, he died at the age of 45. So he died quite young. But he was very prolific, and after his death, his work sold out across the country. And you mentioned uh, Eugene Field Elementary. There was, at one time at least, uh, one Eugene, elementary, Eugene Field Elementary across the country. No kidding, every state? Yep, yep. That's yeah. interesting. Well, the Field House, what's now the Field Museum in St. Louis, was the, the house, that, did he grow up there, or what, what part of his life did he spend there? So he was born in the house there, and he lived there until he was about seven years old. Um, at that time, his mother passed away. She had given birth uh, and died in, in childbirth, and then the child died shortly after. And um, his dad didn't want to remarry, so he sent the two boys to live with their aunt and their cousin out on the East Coast. So he, it's his childhood home. And the Field House is located a house is located exactly where? It's downtown. Yes, we're at 634 South Broadway. We're a block south of Bush Stadium. Uh -huh. So very convenient, easy to get to. And um, at that time, of course, it's changed a lot now, but it, 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 it was a fairly um, upscale residential neighborhood, wasn't it? Yes, so actually, um, we were the suburbs of St. Louis almost. We were the outskirts of St. Louis um, at the time. And it, it was an upper middle class residential area. The row itself was a uh, rental unit. Now yeah. this is the, the old, uh, yeah. an old photograph. Yeah, so this is the photo of the row. Um, there was 12 houses on the row. They were rental units for gentlemen in the sort. So you had bakers, doctors, lawyers living there. Uh -huh. And then it saw hard times at some point. Yes, it did. Um, so um, being that they were rental units, they uh, didn't necessarily get some of the modern amenities that we enjoy today, like electricity <laughs> and running water. Uh -huh. And in the 1930s, the area had gone kind of downhill. Um, so the person who was renting the unit, And of course, the property, there's no Bush Stadium and all that kind of development. Right. Yeah. No. So the property um, was being rented out. Um, and the gentleman who was renting the properties to rent them out to other people. Uh, he did not want them. He wanted to build a modern gas station at the time. <laughs> so it was found out that um, Eugene Field was born in that house. And so um, in 1934, they started plans to save the house. And the school children in St. Louis raised $2,000 in pennies in 1934, 1935 to help save the house. Wow. So. And uh, when did it become what, it, what we know of it today? And there's a picture of it today. Yeah, so this is the how it looks today. The house itself um, opened in 1936. It was ran by the schools until 1968 when it was turned over to St. Louis Landmarks. And then um, it eventually became the not-for-profit, which we are today. The house itself has stayed in its one little row unit since then. And we added the expansion to the museum. On the left there. On the left. Uh, just recently, we just celebrated our one-year um, anniversary of opening the expansion to the uh -huh. museum. And what are we uh, now? The inside the house is set up 
as if you would be walking through their home at the time. So yes, yeah, so the first two floors are set to period, um, to the 1850s. A lot of the furniture actually belonged to Eugene during his adulthood. Uh -huh. um, and then the third floor, we are currently putting in temporary exhibits until we can restore the third floor. And what's in that big new addition? The big new addition actually has exhibits as well. We currently have what's past as prologue, a house brimming with stories, and that's an overview of who we are and the Field family and mm -hmm. um, what we've done as a museum through the years. So that's, this picture kind of shows you a little little intro of to what it, to what it, our exhibit is. How many so square feet is that addition? The addition is 4,000 square feet. Wow. It has gallery space and then it also has our Eugene Field Library along with our gift shop. What do people know about uh, visiting? Are there certain hours? Is there an admission charge? What do we need to know ahead of time? So we're open Wednesday through Saturdays 10 to 4 and Sundays noon to 4. Admission is $10 for adult and children are uh, $5, six and under are free. Mm -hmm. so. And I guess, I bet you get a lot of groups that come through, don't you? Yeah, we do like to group, uh, have group tours. We, we get all sorts of different ages, everything from school groups to adults. So. Uh -huh. And you do have, uh, you have some permanent exhibits, some uh, change through the year. Yes, so we've had our What's Past is Prologue um, stable for quite a while, and I do believe we're gonna keep on going with it because it is such a great exhibit that showcases the Field family. Um, we have a temporary exhibit called Illustrating the Words, the Artistry of the Picture Book. It is over 40 original illustrations of children's books oh. on display. Okay, let's look at some images that we have here, and let's go to the first one. And uh, there was for a second. <laughs> I think that looked like part of a a library. Yeah, so that's the Eugene Field Library. Um, it showcases right now a um, collection of books privately owned. Um, it was uh, given to us by the um, Glykes, Mariana and Peter Gleick. They have been wonderful collectors um, and supporters of the museum. What this, are these? This uh, picture is of books that are uh, currently in our Illustrating the Words exhibit. So these, um, we have actual original illustrations from these books on display. So these just kind of showcase some of the books that you'll kind of see throughout okay, the Okay, I'm assuming that a lot of people that uh, come see it would be uh, school-age children just because of who Eugene Field was. Well, we do get a lot of school-age children, but we actually get a lot of adults too that love history and, huh. and love learning about the house and historic historic houses. Are there interactive exhibits? Do you ever do things like that? So we currently um, try to incorporate hands-on activities for all exhibits. We, um, for our Illustrating the Words exhibits, we created some hands-on where you can illustrate your own image or um, kind of read through or um, make the illustrated book come to life. Hmm. So. Uh, how is, how is funding handled for the Eugene Fieldhouse? So we're a not-for-profit private foundation. We um, are based off of admission, um, membership, donations. So. And I know you. I know you. You use volunteers. Yes, we 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 love volunteers. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what one thing about St. Louis that is so great is that um, there are so many museums, and um, you know there are so many people that we think of that are incorporated in the museum district, but um, we are not. So we really do base ourselves off of um, volunteers' help and um, membership and, and donations. Um, so. What are you really saying? Is, do you not like to have funds that other museums might have? Oh, no, 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 no. We, oh. we, we, love, the, we love the love of St. Louis and <laughs> everybody who gives to everybody. It's just sometimes people don't realize that we are not for profit and we are separate from the National Park Service uh -huh. and from the museum uh, zoo district. I and and uh, there are lots of little museums in St. Louis, little historic houses that are like that. Uh -huh. that, that, you know, the Campbell House, the Chateauillon de Meniel, the Hanley House. The, the, there are different ones that aren't necessarily um, part of that, that we, we all join together and, and try to help each other out because we do need that volunteer basis and that, that um, private sector. Well, let's talk about volunteers for just a second. Uh, what kind of volunteers do you look for? Um, why don't you make a pitch to people out there? <laughs> what kind of things could, would a vo volunteer might be able to do? Uh, we have so many different things that our volunteers and interns do. They, um, they obviously are, help as docents, uh, give guided tours. We also have um, volunteers and um, interns help us with exhibits. So we recently had an intern create um, exhibit called Threads of Society. Um, 
and she she created the whole exhibit on the third floor. So hmm. we love to have um, interns and volunteers. Well, Stephanie, there. you started there as an intern. I did. I did. Where, were you in school? How, how did that happen for yes. you? Yes. So I was going. Uh, I was getting my historic preservation degree um, in Cape Girardeau at Southeast Missouri State University, and um, I needed to do an intern experience. I found. Um, at the time, we were called the Eugene Fieldhouse and St. Louis Toy Museum. I found them and I applied. I got the internship, worked for the summer, and then at the beginning of the next year, I was asked to come on and be part of the staff. Huh. So what kind of things did you do when you were an intern? What kind of projects did you work on? Uh, my project, my main project was the quilt uh, collection that we have. I went through, helped organize all the quilts, did work with our Past Perfect program, which is the program that many museums work with to catalog their items. So I did all the catalog work and the research of the history of the quilts. Quilts? Yes. So what's interesting about quilts? <laughs> Why would you have an exhibit about quilts? Well, um, we recently, like I said, had the quilt exhibit. Uh, people love quilts. You know, it, there's so much history to quilts. My favorite type of quilt that we have um, is called the friendship quilt. So what would happen in, is they started in the 1800s where you would have your family members and your friends each make a part of the quilt and then they would sign the quilt and date the quilt right. and the quilt became one big quilt for you that, and that's how you remembered your family when you moved away. Mm -hmm. So it's oh. so sentimental and so so much history to Is that a permanent ex exhibition? No, it was uh, it was up and it just ended um, in December, but we always like to put them out every couple years. Is this from from that? Yes, that is from the the quilt. Can exhibit. you tell us anything about what we're looking at? Um, so the quilt on the wall is a crazy quilt. They would usually make those with um, scraps of fabrics. So uh, you would find silk ties and and all sorts of different shirts and everything from your family or from your loved ones and then you would stitch it into a quilt and a lot of them have embroideries of different pictures that kind of go along with them. So it's, it's um, like I said, they're very sentimental. It's sort of a lost art, isn't it? I think there still are a few quilting clubs around, but not many people do that. There are, but you'd actually be surprised at how many people say, I heard about your quilting. I've heard that men are getting into quilting, which, you know, it used to right. be just right. what the wives did. Yes, so. <laughs> You know, you never know who's going to get involved in uh -huh. anything. Uh, how are your, uh, before we take our break here, um, how do you guys come up with uh, exhibitions, temporary exhibitions? Do you have a group of people, or how do you get an idea and run with it? So um, usually we try to find from our collections what inspires us or what story we want to tell. And from there, we, we find the objects, we find the stories, and we, we put them on display. You know, we do have some that um, we work with the collectors and different other organizations where if it fits in with the mission of the museum, we love to, to put it on. Mm -hmm. so. I don't know if you've told me the official mission. How would you, how would you, how would you put it? <laughs> well, our mission is uh, to preserve and protect and promote the field family home. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we work to strive to do that. Besides Eugene Field, was anyone else in his family notable for any reason? <laughs> Funny you should say that. <laughs> we, um, Eugene Field's father, Roswell Field, was an attorney here in St. Louis, and he actually took on the Dred Scott case. Oh. So. Wow, that's fascinating. So we were saved because of Eugene, but we became a National Historic Landmark because of Roswell Field. Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Well, listen, let's take a break and come back. We've got some current exhibitions and some other things we want to share with people, and we'll talk about that. So we'll have more about the Fieldhouse Museum on City Corner right after this. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him.
I'm Steve Potter. Welcome back to City Corner. Our guest today is Stephanie Bliss. She's the assistant director of the Fieldhouse Museum in downtown St. Louis, run by the, the Field Foundation. Mm -hmm. Anything we should know about them? Well, um, like I said before, we're a not-for-profit foundation. The board is run by volunteers, so um, they really help to move us in the right direction. They're the ones who helped organize everything to get our expansion completed. So. Mm -hmm. They're, they're a great group of people. Well, we invite people to go down and check out the museum for sure. Let's look at, I think we have uh, an image here of a current exhibit. And you can kind of explain what it is we're looking at. This is at the Fieldhouse Museum. So That's the library, right? Yeah, this is actually the uh, Eugene Field Library. Um, like I mentioned before, it uh, has a collection of books uh, that are um, uh, in there that belong to Marianna and Peter Gleick. They are one of, they know Eugene's works, they've, they've gathered his works and, and really love who he is and who he was as a person. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently there's an exhibit in there called Poppin' for Pop-Ups, A Peek at the Popular Book, and it is a collection of pop-up books I on think display. we have, a, we have yeah. it right here. So this is one of the pop-up books on display. Uh, so they, they depict all sorts of different scenes um, from different stories. There's actually one of Eugene's famous poem, Wink and Blink and a Nod, that we have on display as mm -hmm. well. So, is, is his stuff reprinted often uh, currently? Currently, no, his stuff is not reprinted quite, quite often. We do reprint his works I as imagine, well. can you buy all his things? Do you have a little gift shop or we something? We do have a gift shop, and we can, you can get his most famous book of poems, Poems of Childhood, um, and you can get some books that we've found and have been donated to us, everything from the 1800s um, up until the most recent one that we published. Uh, Stephanie, you just said something a couple of minutes ago about appreci or someone appreciating Eugene Field as a person, too. What do we know about him as a person? Oh my gosh, Eugene was quite the character. Um, he was a child at heart. Uh, he was a... Um, he was a big kid. He liked to collect. One of his biggest collections was a toy collection. He had over 2,000 toys. But you, you mentioned the Toy Museum, which people remember. Yeah. Is that still around? You just not call it the Toy Museum? Yes. Yeah, so we have the toy collection still. Mm -hmm. We've collected toys in Eugene's honor for decades. Um, like I said, he had over 2,000 toys. Unfortunately, his toys um, burned in a fire. Only nine survived. We have seven of the no nine toys. Wow. Um, and so over the years, we've collected toys um, because of his love of toys. And uh, we currently still have the same collection that we've had for over 40, 40 years now, 60 years, I guess it's now. And um, we are going to use the space um, in the gallery area of the Expansion Museum to help promote those toys exhibits. Um, but the, in this one right here that you see in the picture, that was actually one of Eugene's toys that survived the fire. He loved mechanical toys, and these uh -huh. are two acrobats. When you wind up the toy, they do flips. So you can, you can see um, from time to time we'll have different toy exhibits on display, but when we had the expansion to the museum and the opening, we wanted to encompass everything that we are, so we changed the name to the Field Museum, so that way we can talk about Eugene, we can talk about Roswell, and we can talk about the toy. Uh, I think we have a couple more images of just items from the museum like this one. Maybe we could take a look at those. And tell me again, you're, you're just open on certain days and hours. What are those again? We're Wednesday through Saturday, 10 to 4, and Sundays, noon to 4. This picture right here is called the Snake in the Box. He's the oldest toy in our collection. He's from 1780. Uh, he's a trick toy, so you tell your friend um, you can't get the box open, and so you have him pull <laughs> as hard as possible on the lid. <laughs> And when you do, the snake comes out and gives you a snake bite. And then you scream. Right? Um, what's really either funny or really mean, depending on what <laughs> side of the joke you're on, is that um, the snake actually has a tack or a nail at no. the end of his mouth. So he does really give you a poke, a little bite. So he's a, he's a fun one. Wow. <laughs> we don't let people play with him, though. I know. I can see lawsuits. <laughs> right? I think we might have uh, some more. And we have one more. These um, bottles are actually pretty special to us because they were found when we did the excavation work for the expansion. So these bottles have been with us since they were, <laughs> since You're pretty in much. in the basement or a wall or something? Well, they're actually in the ground um, underneath where the expansion of the museum was. Really? So yeah, so those were dug up. Do we know what they are? Uh, they are St. Louis bottles. So they just had, um, you would go and you'd have them filled up at the, you know, when you went to the market. And with what? Whatever? Juice, yeah, whatever yeah. you needed, so. Hmm. So those are how old? 
well, we don't obviously have a date on them, but they had to have been um, before 1930s. So. so you said Eugene Field was quite a character. He was kind of a kid at heart. Do you have a crazy yeah. story about him that, that uh, you can think of? Well, Eugene was very smart, but um, he was not fond of education. Um, you mean formal education? Yes, formal education. He was he, too smart to be formally educated? Well, <laughs> he just didn't like the rules and regulations. Um, one time he uh, decided to have a little fun and he borrowed the chancellor's horse. He stole it. He borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> he sold it back to the chancellor. He painted it and sold it back because the chancellor needed a horse. So, <laughs> so yeah, he, he, well, obviously the paint wore off. You mean he didn't realize he was buying his own horse back? No. <laughs> and you call that borrowing? Borrowing, yeah. <laughs> yep. We say he borrowed. Did he ever get in trouble for any of his uh, little pranks? Well, you know, he was dismissed. So, you know, from university. No, really? Yeah, yeah. He, like I said, he, he had fun. <laughs> Sometimes uh, that kind of behavior when you're younger makes you an interesting adult. Oh, it does. I mean, it made for, for great times. He was an interesting adult, too. Yeah, he, he liked to have fun. He, he... Well, go, go on. I want to hear more about that. <laughs> he um, wrote a few interesting articles about, you know, the, the governor in, in Denver at the time that made him a little upset. You mean very critical? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, he, liked to, he liked to poke people, and he liked to, you know, express himself. <laughs> I think I'd like that guy. Oh, yeah, he was a fun guy, so. Hey, we've got some old photographs of, I believe, of, of his family uh, coming up next. So, yeah, so on the left is Eugene as an adult. Wait. Yeah, the left, I apologize, uh, as, as an adult. Um, and then the two young boys, that is Eugene sitting in the chair with his younger brother, Roswell Jr. And then um, next to them is Roswell Field, the father, the patriarch of the family, and he was the attorney who represented their Scots, the Scots in their fight for freedom. And next to them is Frances, Eugene's mother. Mm, so. Very nice. And let's go to this next one. We have a plaque of some sort. I believe it's uh, in the house somewhere, right? Well, this plaque is actually um, a representation of the one that's shown on the exterior of the house. Uh -huh. So we became a national historic landmark because of Roswell Field's work on the Dred Scott case. Roswell was um, mostly a land suit lawyer. He, he was fluent in many languages, Greek, Latin, Spanish, German, English, and uh, he mostly did land suits here in St. Louis. But he came across um, Dred and Harriet Scott's plight for freedom, and he took on the case. And he actually changed it and helped it um, propel it into the U.S. Supreme Court. Mm. Yeah. Eugene Field, was he ever married? Did he have children? So Eugene uh, did marry. He married a wonderful lady named Julia Comstock. She was from St. Joseph, Missouri. Um, she, was, she was a very um, modern woman ahead of her time. How so? Well, she actually took care of the Field's finances. And um, she gave Eugene... I'm assuming that was not normal in those that days. That was not normal for a woman in the 1800s. A woman would get an allowance back then. Yes. Right? She actually took care of the finances and gave Eugene an allowance. <laughs> so it was, it was um, very... Uh, he was smart after all. He was very smart. And after his death, she uh, copyrighted, along with her daughter, they copyrighted Eugene's works. They made a 12-volume set of Eugene Field works, and they copyrighted them, and they, she lived off of that uh, money from the profits of his works. She never remarried. She had given birth eight times, and five of their kids survived into adulthood. So she raised five children on her own wow. without a husband. Yeah. Whatever happened to the kids? Do we know? Um, so the kids have spread out, but we still have some field family descendants here in St. That's Louis. That's what I wanted to get to. Yeah, yeah. We, they're involved with us. Actually, we had a great group, about 20 of them, of field family descendants come this past summer. OK. So, well, yeah. What did you do? Well, they were actually in town for a special um, family gathering, but we had them, and they came and took a tour, and they, some of them actually got to see their parents as children because we had some of their, their, their pictures on the wall. Oh, so, no kidding. Yeah. So, but some of the field uh, descendants actually stu still live here. Yeah, still live in St. Louis. They come see us. They're, they're part of our membership, mm. so yeah. We got a couple of shots here of the interior of the house, and I think these might have been from the past holiday with holiday decorations, but... Uh, yeah, you made the point before, the whole house, at least the first two floors, is sort of represents what it would have looked like when he lived there. Right. So with our um, 
with our national landmark status, one of the things that we did was we restored the house to the eight, what it would look like we, um, in the 1850s. We had a historian named William Seal. He has worked for the Smithsonian Institute in several um, state capital restorations. He researched what the fields had for their income, what Mr. Walsh uh, wanted for the row as a rental unit, and then the style of St. Louis in the 1850s. And so we try to base the way that we represent the house in that style, along with the items that belong to Eugene uh -huh. from his adulthood. Um, currently in the picture, you see what is a German feather tree. It's from the 1890s. Never heard that term. Yeah, so it's one of the first types of artificial trees. It is, that one is made out of goose feathers. They were hand plucked, hand dipped, dyed, and then wrapped around each branch. So it's a very, this one would have been a very um, well-to-do family. I like it better than those silver metallic Christmas trees, you know, my parents used to have. <laughs> right, from the 50s? <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, these ones are, are really, really wonderful. We have this one and we have a second one that's a tabletop version, and that one's a turkey feather tree. So we, we display um, the, the house in a, a more festive um, feel during, during the Christmas time. And this year, um, in 2018, we will have what's called the Holiday House Tour. It's us and a couple other historic houses in St. Louis, and we do one night only where you can visit all of the museums in one night. Where in the house is this? So this is in the parlor as well. And at the, at the holidays, we like to showcase the toys as well. So you can see all sorts of different toys from our collection on display. Like I said, we do it in a fun, festive yeah. way. And uh, I think you made the point before, Stephanie, that uh, some of the furniture items there were, were actually belong to the fields, too. Right. So the um, piano that you saw in that picture actually belonged to Eugene. We have um, the check stub from Eugene's checkbook that actually has where he purchased the, the piano. So yeah, we have, we have as many things um, on display that belong to the Field family. The, the reason why we have so many of them is because in 1936, Julia, Eugene's wife, was still alive, and um, she was contacted, and she donated quite a few things to us. She really wanted there to be a place for Eugene to be represented. Well, I know you're biased, but uh, what do you think makes the, the Fieldhouse Museum such a special place, and why are we so lucky to have it? Well, there are so many reasons. I, I always say we're like an onion, and you can peel back all the layers, and you get another layer of, of history, of not only local history, but national history. I mean, Eugene being the poet that he was, he, he changed the way that newspaper columns were written. Roswell, with his work as a, a lawyer, changing history. I mean, not just here in Missouri, but as a nation. The, the Dred Scott case propelled the nation into to civil war. And, you know, the toy collection, of course, is always something special that reminds everybody of their childhood. Well, we hope people go to your website, and it, because, you know, you have specific hours and things, people can check that out at fieldhousemuseum.org, right? Yes, www.fieldhousemuseum.org. And any last words you want us to know about what you do? Oh, just want you to come down and check us out. You know, we always hear how people say, oh, I've lived here all my life, and I've never been here before. So I, I want everybody to be able to experience the field house. Stephanie Bliss, thank you so much. Thank I think you, you got a great job. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. The Eugene Fieldhouse, the Fieldhouse Museum in St. Louis. Check it out if you haven't. Go to their website. I'm Steve Potter. Thanks for watching. See you next time.